Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bidamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is July 31st, 2020. And this, of course, is our weekly video. And we're going to take a look and see what's been going on in the uh, Chinese and Asian art market in the last week uh, on the global member pages. We're going to take a look at some things that were on the global pages that happened at Bonhams last week. There's, they had a couple of sales up and uh, what's happened over on eBay and uh, Katowiki. Uh, it's been sort of a busy week, and as many of you know, we're heading into uh, August so that the number of auctions appearing up around the world are going to sort of go down in the month of August because most of Europe goes on vacation during that month, including the auction houses. And uh, if you're using the global pages, you'll notice there are a few of the big auctions up there because they, they get quiet and the listings will start to come back. Uh, usually they start to uh, appear around the second, th uh, third and fourth week of, of, of the month of August. They'll start uploading images once again. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention was uh, we did put a note about that on the landing page, on the, on the global home page. We did add to the, uh, 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 the bottoms page the, a link to the uh, catalog. We're going to start linking the reference sections to each of the member pages so you'll be able to get to them quickly because a couple of people have said, well, sometimes I want to grab a catalog quickly and I don't want to necessarily uh, open and close a bunch of windows. So we're going to add those in. But we added the three catalogs from the bottom sales that have, have sort of finished up. They were late getting these up online. Um, uh, I don't know what was going on, but the bottom seemed to be a little bit behind on getting some of their stuff posted for this last series of sales. But uh, they, they did all right. Right. And uh, we're going to go through some of the prices that were realized. One of the things I wanted to mention, though, if you're a Republican uh, porcelain vase buyer, uh, check out the uh, this is St Stair Gallery. It's on the it's a, it'll be on live auctioneers on the global pages. They have this vase up. Uh, it's coming up. It opens and it, it sells in five days. And uh, they they didn't really date it or seem to know much about it. And uh, those of you that buy Republican vases know right away that what this what this the, are familiar with this bat uh, uh, plique that was used on those vases during the time. These are fairly rare. And this is a very nice one. It's got a paint decoration on the back of it that's sort of in the manner of uh, Giuseppe Castiglione, the horses, the famous horse scenes. And this was a style of painting that he introduced to the Qinlong Emperor and uh, did the famous horse paintings and so forth. And it's been was re reused during the uh, Republic period. So this vase is up. It's a good size one. It's about 14 inches. It has not been drilled, which I was very happy to see because often these vases were drilled just as a matter of course. And uh, it's got a, that, that four character Chin Lung mark on the bottom with the uh, within the square seal. The foot looks right to me. If you're a Republican buyer, you might want to check that out uh, uh, before it goes up. The other thing is that the uh, uh, the uh, vendories uh, the uh, nor a notarism, notarism sale that starts in September, as I said last week, is already up, and there's a lot of good stuff on there, especially if you're an export buyer uh, and you're, you collect things tended to be exported to Europe during the 17th and 18th century. You want to check it out. And one of the things that is in this sale, if you're a Japanese Amari buyer, you might want to check this set out. It's a nice garniture set. These are big ones. They're uh, almost uh, 18, 19 inches tall each, set of five. And uh, from what I could re or tell by the descriptions, they're in fairly good shape. Uh, some of the finials, the knobs on the top, apparently have a little damage, and one of the vases has a repair. Um, but as, as those of you uh, that follow these know, these uh, figurals, these foo lines on the lids are often damaged. Uh, so uh, that's not unusual. But what caught my eye was that the estimate seemed to be pretty reasonable, 2,500 to 4,000 euros. Uh, so if you're a Japanese uh, Amari buyer, early Amari, these were done around 1700 You want to check that out. And the other thing is that this, they also have this up. Uh, is this really nice Kung Shi uh, charger, 38 inches, uh, 38 centimeters rather. And it's, uh, so that's about, what, about 17 inch plate. Nice one. It's got some repairs, but beautifully decorated. Really, really intensely decorated with brilliant enamels. So uh, you might want to check that out also. And then on to uh, here. Uh, these are some things that sold uh, this past week um, uh, on, uh, on, the, on the Bonhams auction uh, that we were, we were following. It was this very nice big bowl. Okay, uh, this, is a, this was over in the London sale. Uh, this bowl is about 14 inches in diameter, one Lee period, very nicely decorated, and it looked to be in very good condition. And uh, you notice that it's got the typical uh, little bit of fritting around the rim and so forth, but good clean outlines of everything, nicely decorated and, and washed in. 
and uh, it ended up selling for not a huge amount of money, $4,193, uh, which I don't think is bad at all. And as I said, it was 14 inches in diameter, so it was a big bowl. This was over a Knightsbridge. The other thing that they had up was this. This was a real interesting thing. They speculated that it was probably made for the Vietnamese market, Southeast Asian market. It was a pottery piece done sort of in the Swato manner and probably of that period, late 1600s. But interestingly decorated on the outside with red and then the inside uh, with that sort of uh, grayish green uh, decoration that they sometimes use as a cobalt that went a little awry. Um, there it is. Interesting bowl. I've, I, 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 I've seen this same palette in small pieces, but never in anything this big. This is a 13 inch wide bowl. And it went reasonably for, you know, if you're a collector of sort of oddballs things, this went for $1,600, which I don't think was a crazy price. I think that was something you'd enjoy owning. It's an interesting thing. And then on to this was the Chin Lung period reticulated double wall teapot. Very nice one. Beautifully done, stoutly potted, uh, nice strong handle with conforming spout. I like the lid on it. I like the reticulated wall. This, the, it was interesting because the, the reticulation looks almost like the work you see in tiles at mosques in the Middle East. So I kind of wonder if they didn't have some influence from that. Uh, but very nicely done. Here we go. Let's see if we can get this thing to load. Uh, there we go. All right. And there's another view of the other side of it. Beautiful color cobalt, though. Beautiful color. And it ended up selling, I think, reasonably, $1,677. All right, so uh, you, you want to check these sales out, especially the bottom sales. Um, the, they, they have some good buys that go through there, and it's a very viable sort of environment uh, at that company. And then on to uh, the, the pair of Amari uh, gin bottles or, or decanters. These were really well done, absolutely elegant. Um, Nice, even decoration, good spouts. They both had their lids, which was amazing. These never have their lids, and uh, both of them had their lids. And uh, they ended up selling for uh, $2,516, which isn't bad at all, okay? And uh, especially for Chinese, even the Japanese ones, that wouldn't be a bad buy. But for Chinese Amari, that was a good buy, 1200 bucks a piece. So, again... Consider bottoms when you're looking at things. And then this was this very nice uh, um, Dreams of the Red Chamber painting. Um, so they thought it maybe be done by um, Hong Lu Meng, 18th or 19th century, but beautiful colors, just beautifully, beautifully painted. This was the cover of the catalog, actually. And uh, it ended up doing okay, but not crazy price, $9,949 for an absolutely great looking painting. And it was good size, it was 15 by 15 inches. This wasn't a small, small painting, it was a good size painting. In a frame, you, it you know, looked absolutely great. And then on to uh, the other sale they had, this was over in um, uh, San Francisco. And uh, it was called Refined Elegance or something was the name of the sale they gave it. And in it, it was an interesting sale because what they had was they had a lot of bowls and porcelains that looked like very early pieces, Kangxi and so forth. And a lot of them are Republic. So if you're a Republic period, late Qing, Republic period buyer, you want to check out this catalog or check it out online because they had provided lots of images online uh, for this. This was a, oddly, this was a group of three, but they only showed two for some reason. I'm not sure why. But they did show the bottoms of them. And if you look at them, you'll see pretty quickly that these are clearly uh, later bowls. The way the foot rims are done and the, and the glaze and the color and so forth. They had pretty nice marks on them. And um, there's one of the marks there. And, the, and the, all three bowls uh, didn't go for a crazy, crazy price. They sold for uh, $2,805. And these were around five inches or so in diameter each. These weren't huge bowls, but they were nice bowls. Uh, so it's sort of an interesting thing. And then they did have this. This, this, this pair of vases originally uh, it had a tag on the bottom that was, uh, listed them as Chin Lung, and they weren't. They were Kang Shi, period. Uh, but a very nice looking pair, a near pair. The one on the right is just slightly taller. But they did provide, um, apparently they had a lot of interest in them, and they provided a mountain of um, um, pictures of the bases of the foot rims. And you get, you get a really, really good look at them. And the previous person that bought them apparently bought them for $240 as Chin Lung vases. And these were often um, confused with Chin Lung pieces because the, the monochromes uh, tended to look very, very similar through the years. But uh, these were considered to be Kung Shi when they were really examined carefully by the, not, I suspect, because 
because they had this really nice thick glaze, crackle in the body and the tone of the glaze and so forth. But they were interesting vases, unusual form. And uh, they ended up selling for $4,075. And, the, and these weren't enormous. They were, uh, well, how tall were these? They were nine inches each, right? Okay, nine inches each, and but nice copper red vases uh, for, for, for a collector that you know you, you don't want to spend you know fifty or a hundred thousand dollars for nice examples. Here you got two of them for under five thousand dollars, and then on to this again more Republic and, and late Qing pieces. Uh, they were fairly conservative in dating these, they, and I, I kind of disagree with them on one of them. But they had this one um, that had the Yong Shen mark on it, and they had it as Republic, and I agree with that. But they also had this round vase with the dragons on the neck, and they had listed it as a uh, 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 Republic period vase. And uh, to my eye, that foot rim looks a lot older than that. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I would tend to disagree with them. That The vase with that foot is this one here on the right. And I think it might have been more likely um, uh, probably mid-1800s uh, or maybe a little before even. Uh, and uh, that's just my opinion on them, based on how they look. But somebody bought the pair of them for $2,000, which I think was very reasonable, $1,000 a piece. This was, the sale was held out in Los Angeles, not San Francisco, excuse me. And then on to this. This was sort of one of the mysteries of the uh, of the week um, of the sale, was that this, this little pair of vases, and they listed them as just having chin lung marks. Um, because they, I don't think they had much confidence that they were terribly old. They, get, they were very, very well painted. They gave them a seven, five to seven thousand dollar estimate, and I, I was looking at these and I thought, boy, that looks awfully glossy. And the way some of the decorations are done just struck me as uh, struck me as peculiar. The way the rocks were drawn, very fluid, and these were not a mirror pair. Um, typically, when they m would make these in the Republic period or so, they would be mirror pairs. These are identical pairs, including the calligraphy. And uh, as we've talked about before, usually when they make a pair, uh, they make them complementary pairs um, or, or close to being identical, but they mirror one another. And these, to me, I think are pretty modern. Um, uh, I think these are post-1960s. And I think very, very well done. That's just my opinion of them. And uh, I, somebody, I think, got a little excited, or a couple of people did, and they got out over their skis on them because they were very well done. All right, but I think they were done after 1950. And uh, they ended up selling for $50,000 um, against a, a, and these weren't big, these were only eight inches tall. And they ended up selling for 50000 against a, a fairly, uh, a, you know, a, a strong, what I thought would be a strong estimate for, for modern porcelain. But... We'll find out. You know, somebody, if somebody has seen this this quality and that type before, made as a non-mirrored pair, I'd love to hear about it. All right, and then over on eBay in Catawicki, we had these things going on. It was a pretty good week. Josh Chamberlain up in New Hampshire had a sale that ended, and a number of things that did quite well, not, not unexpectedly. They were very good. We had, we had featured them on the newsletter page, and uh, this was something that was over at Catawicki, was this pear-shaped Wan Lee export bottle, uh, a nice one with precious objects hanging from ropes and all that business, and it was in good condition. And uh, we had it in the newsletter. It did have a reserve, but I, my understanding was the reserve wasn't too too brutal. So we decided to put it in, and it ended up selling just fine. It went for 2,800 euros, but a very nice example. And it was in good condition. Condition, condition, condition. So important, especially with these later Ming pieces, late Ming Wan Li pieces. You know, the difference uh, we, we've seen over and over, uh, you know, a chip, a hairline, you know, can take off, you know, 60 to 80 percent of the value pretty easily at any rate. Uh, this is this one went for 2,800 euros, and then over on eBay there was this. This was one of the things that Josh had up. Was this cobalt blue pear-shaped bottle vase, 18th century, nice example. And this one got a lot of interest right off the bat. Right at the first uh, 24 hours, the sale was up. It was already up to I think four or five thousand dollars, and in the end it brought 8,100. Uh, but a very nice example, really pretty. And then onto this, he, had, he, he seemed to have a string of monochromes. He had this one, this iron glaze. Uh, he cataloged it as 19th century. It could have been a little bit older, but very unusual glaze, that sort of archaic, bronzy looking glaze to it, and the square handles rather than rounded handles. Thought it was quite handsome. It had an unglazed base. And this sold for $8,988. All right, but interesting form, nice who form vase. 
and um, he, he considered it to be 19th century. And then he had this up, this uh, late Ming Dynasty incense burner, sort of an unusually formed one. It was around six inches in diameter. The, 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 the scale and shape of it make it look like it might be pretty big because they did do bronzes in this shape and they were you know, often you know, 12 inches across. Uh, this one was not that big. It was around six inches in diameter, a very nice example. And it sold for $5,138. And the Republican Cup. This was interesting. This cup sold at Albert's Langdon, which is a very good old school Boston uh, Asian art dealer. Um, uh, this was on Charles Street for many, many years. They're still there. They're still around. Um, it's gone through. It's had a couple of different owners. And this one sold in 1974 for $900. And it looks like one of those Soho, so, you know, those those Soho red like Dixie cups. And uh, but it wasn't. It was a Republican cup. And uh, here's another shot of it. Nice color. Here's the, uh, well, you know, with the Yongshan mark on the base. And uh, this time around, it brought $1,425. But it was a very nice looking cup. Beautiful color and unusual, sort of unusual. And there was the bronze, uh, this uh, late Ming, early Qing dynasty bronze with the uh, Buddhist uh, symbols, the conch, the endless knot, and the wheel, and so forth on it. And uh, it ended up doing quite well. It brought $3,450 because it, it had a couple of bangs in it, but it was a nice form. And then over, this was an, another piece that was up. This seller had it listed as uh, Chin Lung or, or, or later 18th century or something. It was pretty clearly a Kangxi example um, by the by enamels and decoration. And then if you flip it over, you see the back of it uh, with that, that ivory uh, foot rim, very rounded, very smooth, nicely finished, and so forth. And um, here he is. He put it with a book he had or something. Up, upstream Mary Oller. I don't know what that is. It's an essay. Anyway. Uh, it ended up doing quite well. A lot of people liked this plate, even with the chip out of the edge here in the corner. It ended up selling for $1,421. All right, it was a good price, but it was a nice plate. It was very nicely done. It had a lot of good negative space in it. And then this went off the last weekend. If you're a, uh, a Wan Lee buyer, this was sort of a nice one. This was the ceramics and the collectibles uh, had this up with the uh, scrolls and uh, silk balls and so forth on it. Uh, nicely decorated, good contrast of colors, dark, light, all that, well-defined, and uh, no damage. And it sold for $393, and it, what was it, about 8 inches in diameter or something like that. Get the, get the dimensions here. Hold on, hold on here. Does he put in the dimensions? I know he puts in the dimensions somewhere. Um, two, tw uh, 20, 279 millimeters, okay, so it's, yeah, about 8 inches in diameter. All right, and now on to uh, the next one. This one, that was, this was the bamboo, the recumbent Lohan with, with, the, with his horse, and he's carrying, holding a rue scepter, and here's the horse and everything. Nice old one, and I like the stand that somebody made for it. The stand is not original to it. It's a much later stand, one of those inlaid silver stands uh, that was, was probably carved to go with it. Here's a good view of the underside, lots of nice natural wear. Uh, sort of faded from time, you know, the shrinkage of the bamboo and so forth. And it was probably very light to pick up, I suspect, because they always are. Age. Bamboo, bamboo as it ages, it gets much, much, much lighter. Uh, if you've ever picked up a brush pot that looks like it's supposed to be Ming Dynasty and it's got a little heft to it, be careful. should be basically almost as light as balsa wood. By the time these pieces got really old, especially Ming pots, when they got old, they, got, they get very, very light. The wood becomes incredibly light because all the moisture is out of the bamboo, long gone. All right, and this sold for $730. Uh, but it was, a, it was a nice thing, it was just a nice, nice personal thing to put on a table. It was about three or four inches long. And if you were a Harado buyer, I hope you, what you, one of you got this. This was a great piece of Harado, a very, very nice piece with dragon rondelles, clouds, and then all this incise work um, around, the, uh, around the base and around the top, how they carved Harado so beautifully. And it had been drilled as a lamp. Harado's, Harado vases were unbelievably popular as lamps in the 1920s and 30s especially. Uh, they, they just, the decorators loved Harado wares. They loved to drill them out and make table lamps out of them. And uh, this was no exception. And I suspect this was originally one of a pair. Uh, but the base, the, the, the incise work, the shape, that very nice creamy glaze, and uh, it went, I think, reasonably, $363. And this was a nice size one. Was it what, 12, 12 inches, almost 13 inches? Uh, so it was a good vase at a good height, and I think that was a very, very good buy. If you're a Harado buyer, I hope you got it. That was a great buy. 
And then there was this, the uh, Yixing line pewter teapot with jade spout handle and, and uh, finial. And it had this uh, design in the side of it. It looks like a bird. This is an old one. It's got lots of legitimate wear to it. Uh, nice piece. Here's the interior with a stamp in the bottom. Uh, you always want to check when you have these Yixing pots um, inside of pewter. Look down inside always to see if there's a seal mark. All right, and always check the interiors for cracks. Uh, they're wonderful to have. Yixing teapots are, uh, that are lined, in, you know, the pewter lined Yixing pots are very, very desirable among collectors, as many of you know. But always triple check for cracks to the to the Yixing inside because it happened a lot to a lot of them and it severely diminishes the value. It pulls the value way, way, way down on these. Um, and on the really rare ones, it can have a massive impact. Anyway, this one went for $1,000 and uh, it was about right for it. All right, it wasn't a particularly unusually shaped example. The really crazy shaped ones can do very well. And then over here was the Celadon Crackle Late Ming Bowl that we talked about last week. We talked about the, the colors, uh, the color differ differentiation between this one and the original photograph that was in the Christie's catalog in 2015. And uh, a couple of people on the message over on the uh, comments section under the video last week mentioned that they thought maybe the Christie's color was more accurate because they mentioned it as being a bluish green. And, um, and I thought this one looked like it was a bit, had a bit of bluish green to it too. So uh, it, it just shows you how opinions can vary. And I'm not saying anybody else, anybody's wrong. They could be right too. And here's, here's a shot of the bottom of it. All right, and this one did pretty well. Uh, the estimate at Christie's five years ago was around, I think, five to $6,000. And uh, this one brought 40, this time it brought 4,617. And I don't know what it brought at Christie's. I was unable to find out. But at any rate, I think that's a pretty decent price. And then on to uh, this. This was uh, this was something I featured in the newsletter page for people that like Japanese stuff only because I thought this was a dandy uh, sort of a copper and then gilded uh, incise decorated uh, 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 Tetsube. A nice one. And I didn't think it was going to bring a lot of money. It didn't. It brought ended up selling for 80 euros. But it was a nice example that if you collect Japanese things and uh, you, you like a good buy, this would have been a very nice buy. It had lots of extra decoration all over it, top, front, back, and bottom. Uh, it was nicely made, all hand hammered, good work. This is really a well-worked piece. Um, here's a picture of the underside, and you can see the work that went on into it. Just a nicely crafted piece and a great thing for $80. I mean, how, how 80 euros, how do you beat that? And then uh, over here, this was something else that Josh had sold, was this uh, this Lang Yao um, uh, uh, vase, uh, probably Kangxi period, judging by the looks of it. Josh, Josh was being a little conservative. He just called it 18th century. And I kind of understand it because people will complain. But at any rate, this look, that looks like a Kangxi bottom to me. And uh, with, the, with that nice smooth foot and that, that green celadon crackle underneath. And then, and then the way this glaze looks with all those little dots and bubbles in it so forth yeah kang -Chi. and it brought a kang -Chi price it brought seventeen thousand one hundred dollars so you can't beat that and uh, the other thing i wanted to mention on thinking of it i want to thank everybody for so many emails about uh, uh their thoughts on our building the bit amount live site for auctions and 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 and, and fixed price postings by sellers uh that we would we would set up and uh we've got some great ideas thank you uh, so many of you made the same idea, so it seems like a, we have sort of a quorum on certain things that people don't want. And uh, the big thing we're looking at right now is uh, ways to keep the, uh, the fees and commissions as low as humanly possible. And you know that we do that with everything we do. We don't like to, you know, there's no reason to charge everybody a fortune and, you know, 10% from the seller and 15% from the buyer and all this other crazy stuff. We're trying to work out a sort of a flat fee uh, thing and then we can base our budget on how to structure the site and make it effective and make it work. And, um, uh, but a lot of you gave me some great ideas and I really appreciate it. And if you get more, please don't stop them coming because the suggestions are gonna create the site. That's how the site is gonna be built. All right, and uh, we've gotten some terrific ideas. So anyway, thank you. All right, now let's mosey on to this thing over on Catawarki. We featured this last week. There was this really nice Kangxi plate. Uh, it was about seven inches in diameter, but just very beautifully decorated. Just a beautifully decorated piece uh, with the, the famous basket pattern in the center. And it ended up doing pretty well. It brought 448 euros which is right about in the range, I guess, that you'd expect these to bring. Uh, but a very, very nice uh, example with a sort of atypical border and so forth. 
All right. Now yeah, let's take a look here. There's a couple of things coming up this week. There's a few things that are pretty good things on eBay coming up this week. One of the things that's closing on Sunday is this very nice soapstone carving of the uh, uh, the, Oha, uh, the, the Kuan Yin riding the, uh, the horse with the child. This closes. I mentioned it last week just because I liked it so much. And uh, it closes in a couple of days. It closes Sunday. It's up to $157. And uh, we'll see how that does. Uh, and then on to this. This uh, closes also in a couple of days. Is this very nice uh, Ching, uh, possibly late Ming, uh, but the elephant heads look Chin, chin Lung the way they're done. Um, bronze vase. Nice example. Beautifully potted, uh, beautifully cast. Nice lappets. I like the beads coming down. And you've seen the same combination of elephants here, especially with the elephants and the beadwork on uh, body, full body casting of uh, Chin Lung elephants. Uh, and they did some that were earlier too, but it's more typical of the Qinlung period. But the shape is, is uh, later Ming, all right. And that's up to just $41. If you're a Chinese bronze buyer, you, you wanna check these out, it will be on the newsletter page. Um, I actually put a bid on this just to get it on the radar because I was trying to get it to turn up on one of our searches and it wouldn't turn up until it had a bid, so I gave it a bid. All right, and um, I'm not buying it, but uh, I like it a lot. I like it a lot, but uh, that's that's where this is at. If it stays at $41, I'll buy it, but I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to get up there. All right, and that's about it for the week. It was a good week, uh, some interesting things, some good results at bottoms, and like I said, there'll be less auctions um, coming up around the world for the next month or so while people in Europe go on vacation. Uh, everybody's moving around over there, going to the, trying to go to the beaches uh, as much as they can and go camping the way they love to camp over in Europe. The Germans and the French all go camping, and uh, it's fun. And uh, I just got back from the house in New Hampshire myself, so anyway, it was good to be up there. And uh, that's it, all right? So have a wonderful week, and we're working on a few things, and we'll keep everybody up to date on the... Uh, on the uh, uh, site development as it comes along. We're gonna start, probably start roughing it out and laying it out in the next couple of weeks. And we'll show some drafts and we'll express what we're doing with it. And uh, as I said, please, please uh, you know, send us some uh, ideas, thoughts, and whatnot that you'd like to see. All righty, have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.